if this is your first time visiting the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and notifications bell that way you know when i upload my videos to youtube welcome to nerd guy news ngn where all nerds collide What's up everybody, Nerd Logic here. Let's talk about the Mandalorian in chapter 23, The Spies. Who are the spies? Who tipped off Moff Gideon that the Mandalorians were coming back to Mandalore to take their homeworld? I got a couple of few suspects who may have be working with Moff Gideon. And we'll save the best for last. So let's break this down and talk about it. Suspect number one, Kashka Reeves. Why do I think Kashka is a spy? Well, let's take this back all the way to season two of The Mandalorian, the episode of Ares. Kashka is wearing all black, spying on Din while he's at the market. Okay? Bo could have easily went with the rest of her night owls to go spy on Din. It's a possibility she sent Kashka out to go spy and see what Din was up to. But I don't think that was the case at all. The fact that Kashka was by herself, that Bo and Axe, none of the Night Owls were there with her, that she was there by herself. I believe Kashka was there grabbing Intel to take it back to Moff Gideon. The fact that she is wearing a black robe. Normally good guys don't wear black robes and just spy on people. If she's a Night Owl and a true Mandalorian and working with Bo-Katan, I really believe that she wouldn't have done this. I believe she was definitely there to get information and take it back to Moth Gideon. This also explains why later on in the episode, if you remember when Den and Bo and all the Night Owls were on the bridge and the captain decided to basically kill himself because he didn't want to give any information if you notice no one else was really there the other imperial officers were either captive or dead and the captain himself he killed himself so no one was there to give moff gideon any tip off only those four that was on the ship when they took the ship and added it to their fleet I believe Kashka definitely had some intel and she passed it off to Gideon. And that's how Gideon knew that Bo was traveling with Den and Den was helping them specifically. Kashka is definitely a candidate of being a spy. Another small evidence that Kashka is a spy is the fact that she is very fascinated with Grogu. Every time Den was around Grogu, or she was around Grogu, she always had an interesting glare or stare at the small creature. She took very small, silent fascination in Grogu, and I really believe she was trying to tell Moff Gideon that Din has Grogu and that she was close to tipping him off to getting Grogu to Gideon. Kashka is definitely a spy. Watch out for Kashka. Candidate number two to be a spy is Axe Wolves. He has all the animosity, all the motives that he needs to betray Bo-Katan. Simply because Bo-Katan came back empty-handedly without the Darksaber. He took over her entire fleet of Night Owls and Mandalorians. And he also became quite fond of being the leader. I believe that Axe is probably in cahoots with Moff Gideon just so he can retain title as a leader or a significant hierarchy of the Mandalorians. But I believe it's going to come back to bite him in the butt because you can't trust Moff Gideon. And I believe Axe is just he's just kind of conflicted and he really doesn't know who to choose or what side to really be on because he doesn't trust Bo he kind of trusts Bo and then he's pretty much off kind of doing his own thing he becomes a gun for hire and we saw that in that episode in the guns for hire episode he has become so entombed 
and so relaxed in that role of being a leader. And I really believe now that Bo has the saber, um, I really believe that Axe feels a little bit of jealousy because he was somewhat second in command to Bo and the Night Owls. And now that everything is going astray and haywire, I believe that Axe is trying to play a double sword or a double spy or triple spy, if you will. And he's going to throw the rest of his Mandalorians and Bo all under the bus. I mean, if you look at this last episode, he conveniently just leaves and says he's going to go get reinforcements for the rest of the Mandalorians. But if you notice when he leaves, not one blaster bolt is fired near him. And if one blaster bolt was fired, it looked like it was intended to miss. Like these are not just your regular clone troopers. These are like super elite commandos. I don't see how they could not miss. So something is going on here. There has to be something going on with Axe Wolves. I feel like he has some motives. There's some jealousy. There's a little bit of animosity towards Bo. And I believe Axe Wolves is the second primary candidate that could be a spy against Bo-Katan and the rest of the Covert and the Mandalorian Night Owls. Candidates number three to be spies for Moff Gideon are the three surviving Mandalorians who have been on this planet the whole entire time. Guys, come on. These are three Mandalorians who have been on Mandalore this whole entire time since the bombing. And you're telling me that they don't know that Moff Gideon was on the planet the whole entire time? These three Mandalorians had had years to explore Mandalore, to go to the Great Forge, to go to other destinations on Mandalore that hold great value. I'm quite sure they ran into Moff Gideon at some point. Bowen Din say that you cannot have any communications on Mandalore because of the atmosphere is so damaged and is jamming the uh, the comm links. I think that is completely utter bullcrap. I honestly believe Moff Gideon is using jamming signals from his Imperial base and he is jamming signals so no other life form or no other person can communicate on Mandalore except for Imperial forces. And he got these three surviving Mandalorians, he tortured them and he spared their lives and told them that if Bo-Katan or any other Mandalorian comes to the planet, that they are to recruit them, bring them back to Moff Gideon for questioning and try to find a way to dispose of them. And that's what these three Mandalorians are doing. And honestly, they have the motives to do so. When they come to find out that Bo and the rest of these other Mandalorians are on the planet, they are sitting down with Bo, they're sitting down with Den in the armor, and they're all talking. And he is under the main, the captain, the general, I forgot his name, but he is under the impression that they did not surrender. And when he finds out that Bo surrendered, to Moff Gideon and that's how he became possession of the Darksaber you could see the three of their faces they look very upset they are very upset that Bo surrendered and you can tell that Kashka tried to stop Bo from telling them but Bo told Kashka to just let me tell the truth so we get these three Mandalorians who have been on this planet this whole time who is under the belief that Bo did not surrender and when Bo tells them that they surrendered that she surrendered they look very confused they look almost angered very disappointed this could be motives that they could use to turn against Bo because they've been on this planet for so long they know Moff Gideon is there they know Moff Gideon is jamming the signals and they are going to basically use their ship somewhat foreshadowing as a trojan horse like in greek mythology they used the trojan horse to go to enemy lines and try to gain victory i believe this ship was used almost like a trojan horse to get the mandalorians to moff gideon and then they betray Bo. 
And that's why I believe that these three Mandalorians are spies for Gideon and they basically through the rest of their covert and night owls and their old leader of Mandalore under the bus. And I believe that we may just see this come into full circle in this next episode. You cannot trust these three Mandalorians, at least not right now. This is where the fun begins. This next person needs no introduction. She's been around since the beginning of the entire series. She forges all the armor for the entire covert. She has not had any name drop except for the name of the armor. Guys, let's just be honest here. The armorer is definitely the spy. She has been the spy since the beginning. She has been the spy since season two. She's been the spy now. The armorer is definitely working with Moth Gideon. And here's why. The armorer has so much hate for Bo-Katan. If y'all guys remember when Din mentions Bo-Katan Kreese, the armorer specifically tells Din that Bo is a Mandalorian who has lost her way who is leading a cult and who has basically failed her people of Mandalore. And then in season three, we see the same person, we see the armor do a complete 360, has a change of heart and invite Bo-Katan into her covert. And it's crazy how she sends Din off to Mandalore to bathe into the mines of the living water when she specifically says that the planet is cursed. Why send one of your people off to Mandalore if you know the planet is cursed? It just makes no sense. It's, it's almost as if the armor sent Din to Mandalore just so she can tell Moff Gideon that, hey, Mandalore is going to be invaded or reclaimed by Bo-Katan and the people of Mandalore. And this was the perfect setup. And... I feel that there's just no way that the armorer was going to allow Bo to come into the covert and just remove her helmet because she told Bo to do so. This was all planned. This was all a setup. At the break of dawn the next morning, Bo decides to speak with the armorer because she wants to talk to her about the Great Forge. But the armor decides that it's a better idea to take the wounded in the gauntlet back to the fleet that's in space the same fleet that is moth gideon's light cruiser i feel absolutely nervous for the mandalorians that are on that light cruiser the armor left conveniently enough to the point where she would not get in harm's way of what was about to come next she left at a specific time because she knew the plan was getting ready to go astray, And this was her opportunity to get to safety and get out of harm's way so she can continue with her plan to betray Bo. And now that she's in space on the stolen light cruiser that was once Moff Gideon's ship, she's going to do something to either destroy or kill or annihilate whatever mandalorians that are left either pirates are going to show up or moff gideon is going to use his squadron of super elite commandos and destroy the rest of the fleet that is left in orbit i have two more reasons why the armor is the spy and working for moff gideon the fact that the armor has taken on the creed to not remove her helmet and not only her but the entire covert that her and Din are a part of now this is a covert who are mainly mostly of foundlings and of a new generation of Mandalorians who have adopted the old ways that's the key word here adopted most of Mandalorians right now within the Star Wars universe are pretty much new Mandalorians Mandalorians who have 
uh, basically taking on a new creed who can take off their helmets, who can put their helmets on, and there is no transgressions. There are no, um, there's there's no other type of law that forbids you from not taking your helmet off. So the armorer has basically adopted this old, old ancient way of being Mandalorians to keep her identity a secret because she does not want anybody to know who she truly is and i believe the armorer is no other than rook cast from the clone wars if you remember rook cast rook cast was a part of darth maul's uh faction during the siege of mandalore and she was a loyalist to maul and she actually fought Bo-Katan and Bo-Katan really whooped her ass. I mean, really gave her a beating. And I don't think she really forgave Bo-Katan for the butt whooping that she got in the Clone Wars. And I believe that Rook Cass has reformed back to her old ways of being a royal Mandalorian to Maul. And Maul's version was basically no one overrules him. And I believe that has stuck with her since then. And I believe Moff Gideon is also a loyalist to Maul. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But the armor is definitely, I feel, is Rook Cast. Unless she's a Zarbrak underneath her helmet, which why she has the horns. But I don't see that those horns would be in that particular placement you know zybrax normally have horns and in, in a in a very specific way and her horns don't look like it's in a specific way that a zybrax would have their horns so i'm thinking that this is rook cast that she is indeed a loyalist to maul she's following maul's old ways and Moff Gideon was also a mandalorian during the siege of mandalore and he's also following Darth Maul's old ways now the horns look at the horns guys they both have horns on their helmets this goes to show you that they are working together Moth and the armor know each other either they know each other from the past or they just met and they are Mandalorians who follow Maul's old ways and I really believe this is going to play out in the season finale and we're going to get the answers and the theories that we all been wondering for a long time now. Those are going to get answered. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notifications bell. That way, you know, when I post all of my videos up to NGN Nerd Guy News, guys, this has been an awesome video. I can't wait to do more. I'm glad to be back to this channel and to be making more content for you guys. So stay tuned and I cannot wait to this season finale. May the force be with you. And this is the way.